Okay, here's the patient. It works very well. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the power light's on. When I first got this mixer, uh, it was bought for $2 at a yard sale by my father. He gave it to me to fix because when you plugged it in and powered it on, all the solo lights, in fact, many of the lights on the board would just flash. Sort of like when you have the rude solo light on, but faster than that flash rate. And you could tell something was wrong with it. It didn't work properly. Uh, I've gone ahead and disassembled some of it, so let me open it up. When you take yours apart, what you'll have to do, there are six screws on each side. There's a bunch of screws here. There are ten more screws at the bottom. There's four at the top, uh, four at the bottom, and two more you have to take out here. And then you'll be able to separate the two. I'll try to keep all of this in frame. But, uh, well, it fell off. This is the power supply. It's normally connected to the bottom. Uh, what you have to do, there's one wire. It's convenient if you disconnect it. It's a, not a ribbon cable, but it's a, well, yeah, it is a ribbon cable, I guess. Anyway, just disconnect it. This particular one doesn't have fire wire. I assume if it had fire wire, this 40 pin cable would go somewhere. But on mine, it doesn't go anywhere. Anyway, once you disconnect uh, the power supply from the bottom, you gotta take off 10 of these little uh, nuts with uh, locking washers on them. Once you take it apart, you can get to the power supply, and that's where the root of the problem was for this board. I'm gonna get a little closer so I can zoom in a bit. I didn't take the board out this time. Uh, because it's a little bit of a pain, but when you take the board out, what you have to do on this side where the semiconductors are located, you've got to take out all those screws uh, in order to get the board out. There's also four different screws in the corners you have to take out, and it's a little bit of a pain, but you can, you can do it. Initially what I did is I suspected that the large capacitors were at fault. I don't remember if any of them were bulging or not. I think some of them were. I replaced them and turned it back on. It still didn't work. Finally, I replaced this last little capacitor right here. This is not the original one. It's a C9 and it's just a little bitty capacitor. I suspect the other capacitors were okay and all I really had to do is replace that one. But it's really close to the uh, semiconductors. Uh, it's close to this little transformer here. So once you get the board out, you can, get a, you can have access to it. Let me read off the value. Uh, let's see, it looks like it's a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. It's an electrolytic, so of course make sure you plug it back in or you put it back in with the right polarity. The one I've got in here is a 63 volt version. Uh, I probably put in one that's a little higher voltage and that just means that it can take more abuse basically. Uh, it doesn't hurt to change something or a capacitor to a higher voltage rating. What's bad is when you take it to a lower voltage rating, but you want to make sure you get the same microfarad or capacitance rating. So as long as it's a 4.7, let me double check that again. Yeah, 4.7 microfarad, that's probably the problem. Now, probably other Mackie boards use the same power supply, because if it can supply enough current, why not? So even if you don't have this exact model, it may be worth taking yours apart and having a look at it to see if that little capacitor is all that's wrong with your board. It's an old board, it's an analog board, not worth much anymore of course, but if you use it like I was going to for a, a keyboard mixer where you have multiple sound sources like a keyboard and a couple of sound modules, it's convenient because you've got, you know, uh, well really, you've got, what, eight channels and two of them, well no, four of them are stereo channels, so it's a decent little board, it's a Mackie, so that's a good name, but hopefully this helps somebody and you can fix more of these things and keep them out of the landfill.